everyone. Thank you for joining us on the next episode of The Cold Cast. I'm your host, Dr. Anna Johnson, and today I have my very good friend, Tom Horivnik here, who is um, a veteran of the supply chain industry. He's been around for about 25 years and has such a rich experience in transportation. And today he's going to be talking to us a little bit about a brand new service offering that we're getting ready to launch called Complete. Stop touching that. What are you doing? Oh, sorry. Stay, in your, you. well, Stay in your lane. It's very nice to be here. Thank you for yeah, having yeah. me. <laughs> Stay in your lane. But speaking of your lane, let's talk a little bit about Complete. Can you talk to us about what that is? Sure. First of all, thank you for having me. And, uh, you know, this is a, a, a great environment for me to learn. You know, there's different things to be involved with. And, and uh, you know, I, I think some of my interest will come out in the complete conversation. Uh -huh. So hopefully we get there. But, you know, complete is really a service offering that U.S. Cold is putting out to customers right mm -hmm. now where uh, we want to be a partner in a customer's supply chain. From right. A trans really in, from a transportation perspective. We right. are a warehousing company. Uh, you know, we are deploying out there strategically. Right. You have inventory out there and, and we're deploying. But, you know, running uh, the inbounds, looking at transportation from an informational standpoint, mm -hmm. operational standpoint, uh, you know, that's kind of where Complete is starting to come involved and, and really to be a, a, an asset to a customer's transportation department. So if I so if, if I can summarize it, then, you know, we're a third we're a third party cold storage company, right? We also have transportation. So you've been doing transportation for 25 years, and that's just another opportunity for us to give our expertise and help customers better manage their transportation. Exactly. You know, and I think my expertise is not in trying to set up podcasts. You know, right. we kind of, I think we just discovered that. I mean, that's a, that's a lane that right. I need to stay right. out of, and and I think that's where I get a little bit empathetic with our customers is. They have so many things that they have to worry about, right. you know, from a supply chain and their bandwidth, it can be limited at times where, right. you know, where they need to be focusing on procurement, on sales, on, on market saturation, right. right? You know, the complete offering allows uh, the customers to focus on things that run their enterprise yeah. and then really essentially uh, outsource the transportation and supply piece with, you know, technology. Yeah. And expertise in the, expertise in in the uh, the areas that are out there from from a, a transportation perspective. Right. So how did this evolve? How do we go from where transportation um, and warehousing to kind of a fourth party managed service, if you will? Sure. You know, I think uh, you know, uh, I, I you know, outside the twenty five years I've spent in the industry, I have a little bit of shipper background in me as well, and and I think coming to U.S. Cold is you know, we were involved in conversations mm -hmm. with customers, you know, constraints, the stress points of the supply right. chain and, and what does that look like, right? And I think what happens is you, you get storylines of right. the, the stresses that customers are going through. And I think, you know, myself coming on board, understanding that, you know, production is a big part mm -hmm. of us uh, customers world, sourcing is a big part, you know, we could come in and have a conversation about how we could support your supply chain mm -hmm. if you're from a transportation perspective. And I think that narrative has gone a long way. We're starting to see customers say, say hey, I'm, I'm just not well informed on my right. transportation spend or my, my uh, key performance indicators on... Or I'm a new company and I'm, I know how to make a product. I don't know how to get a product to the customer. To market, exactly, yeah. yep. exactly. Do you have customers that are using this today? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so we have customers that are. Uh, Give us an example of yeah. So we have uh, the the Welshire Farms account okay. in, yep. in South Jersey. You know, um, uh, just to put it out there, they they are able to focus on their sourcing and their customer service and their their market sales. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they are owned by the Land of Frost Group mm -hmm. uh, out of Munster, Indiana. Well, what do we actually do for them? What is complete? What do we actually do for them? So what we're actually doing is all of their transportation. Okay. Uh, so they focus on, uh, like I said, customer service and, and sourcing, you know, we at U.S. Cold mm -hmm. handle all their transportation. So, so when they get, so they, they're storing their product in our warehouse. So, right, is that correct? It's, you know, it doesn't have to be, right? I, absolutely not, yeah. yeah. So right now they don't store with U.S. Oh, Cold. Oh, right, perfect. That's yeah, a great example. They don't store yeah. with U.S. Cold. Okay. And so, uh, you know, from that perspective, you know, we take a look at it and say, hey, let's let's look at the transportation. Yep. You know, we're... we're so you they give us they give us the an order or they give us a destination. Like, what do they give us? And then how do we support that that process? Yeah, sure. They'll give us an order saying, uh -huh. hey, I have uh, a customer in Michigan I uh -huh. need to service with, you know, four pallets of product. Right. Uh, we'll arrange the transportation. Okay. We'll assign the cost to it. Okay. And we'll make sure that that order is planned and shipped 
and delivered. Okay. Right. So so that's that's from an operational st okay. standpoint, but then we'll also handle uh, the AP end of it. So okay. carriers will send us the invoice for the move, right. and then we'll be able to consolidate invoices to you know our customers you know on a weekly basis say here's here's one invoice she pays that, that's another okay. thing is that's a good point. you know i think i think you know we talk about logistics and we mm -hmm. talk about supply chain a lot you know there is an accounting aspect to this yes. uh that, that needs to be kind of looked at you know because i've talked to a lot of accounting departments mm -hmm. out there that are just they're not involved they don't want to be involved in carrier payment right you know? and the audit and all of the the processing part of it the whole processing yeah. part of it exactly i mean right. that's perfectly yeah. put you know we'll take that on because okay. we've automated a lot of that a lot of what we do is is via email mm -hmm. it's paperless yep um you know we catalog pod's on the you know in the cloud uh, you know so it's easily grabbed so you're not taking a filing cabinet space mm -hmm. and things like that so that's an, an additional part of what we do to say, you know, how can we help you, Mr. Customer, make your life a little bit easier, allow you to focus on, you know, AP with your vendors, you right. know, your raw material vendors or, uh, you know, sales to your customers mm -hmm. and things like that. So you don't have to store in our warehouse. You don't even have to, you just need the information on how to get it so you can source the transportation. Is yeah, we just need yeah. the information, yeah. information on what you need to accomplish from a customer standpoint mm -hmm. on a daily basis. What orders do we need to ship? Well, that's, what, yeah, what I mean, that's raw a huge materials differentiator. do we need to bring in? Yep. Uh, absolutely. And so, you know, in terms of staff and resources and experience, what do you believe that we have that someone else cannot provide? Right. I, I believe we're stability. You know, mm -hmm. yep. United States Cold Storage is a 124-year-old company. Right. We're not uh, something that just came up, uh, you know, right. over the past six months right. and have this have this idea. This has grown from our understanding mm -hmm. of the coal supply chain, uh, you know, and, and I think that's what leverages our expertise in this area. Yeah. You know, we know a lot about the cold supply chain right. and, and cold controls along the supply chain. You know, but the reality is, uh, you know, we help we help on on dry moves, mm -hmm. on ambient moves as well. So, uh, you know, it, the concept really kind of grows beyond our four walls as right. a, from a warehousing perspective, and allows us to have a conversation. And say, you know, how can we help our customers? Right. Run and their I think business? it's a unique fit because you know, for the most part, our our competitors don't. I mean, they they dabble in transportation, but they don't. They haven't really done consolidation. Um, in terms of the volume and the capacity that we've done it to, right? Yeah. So, you know, we've spent multiple years building up this expertise, mm -hmm. and it seems like it's just a natural extension to say, okay, hey, listen, let us take on more. We already know how to do this. We've been sourcing loads. We've been paying carriers for, you know, for 30 years. So why don't we take that and use it and help our customers? Exactly. You know, and I and I think we're in the, in the mode of listening. You know, yes. I think that's the one thing I like about United States Cold Storage yep. is I, th I think we are able to listen and, and hear our customers out, um, you know, and so when you, you start matching up the thoughts of, you know, what we're hearing from the market mm -hmm. and what our expertise is right. in, you know, we've put a lot of resource into, uh, uh, you know, onboarding carriers and vetting carriers when they're, when we mm -hmm. use them. Uh, we put a lot of resource into the TMS. We use the Mercury Gate product, for, you know, provides a lot of visibility. Um, there's portals out there for customers and carriers. You know, we bring all of these pieces in, and it does provide, uh, you know, a, a viable solution for, mm -hmm. all, I think, a lot of customers out there. And so that's, I mean, I think the name Complete is actually a great name. Um, but I think it's because we really, um, you know, it, it's kind of the culmination of, like, the holistic version of the supply chain, right? So you're always trying to connect the dots from one point in the supply chain to another, and this just seems to kind of spread across all of that expertise, into one area and yeah. kind of how it's packaged. Yeah, and I agree. And I think the one thing I, I do want to make one note is, you know, we talk about the supply chain and we talk about mm -hmm. logistics and the, yes. the TMS. But but I also think we are the group willing to sit down and, you know, in a boardroom and talk about strategy, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and where are we deploying and where is the yep. deployment yep. working, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of people I know right now on the West Coast has a, has a hard time reaching the five boroughs mm -hmm. of New York and New England oh, yeah. and things like that. You know, we would be that that uh, consultative resource to say, hey, how can we do this better? Do yep. we need to put inventory closer to the Northeast? You know, or are we do we have to be consolidating better out of California right. or, or, you know, or something along those lines? So not only is it an A to B move and that workflow, right. but it's someone that's actually willing to sit down and have a conversation with you and say, you know, how can we get better at the supply chain? Right. So that's, I mean, that's kind of utilizing our consultancy services. So in what other ways do we... 
are we able to, to leverage that and use those services to help customers? Yeah, I, well, I, I think what it what it really kind of boils down to is being available, okay, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and 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 staying away from hey, it's just an A to B move. Because right. at the end of the day, a lot of this is an yeah. A to B move. Yeah. But you know, having uh, you know pushing the narrative and saying hey, you know, if you're planning for yeah. 2024, bring us to the table and be happy to sit and talk about. Are we running an RFP? Right. Are we looking at our cost? You know, are we looking at our service? What are the yep. what are the plans? What's the strategy for next year? You know, those are the types of environments that we've been involved with. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we'll continue to be involved with, mm-hmm. and you know, would be it's always exciting to sit down with customers and say, hey, where are we go? Where are right. we going? Uh, you know, from a collaborative approach. Yeah. Yeah. And then how? Do, I mean, can you talk to me a little bit about how we help our customers streamline their services? Sure. You know, I think that, that that first example, you know, the West Coast trying to reach the East Coast, yep. uh, you know, is there is there modeling that we could recommend? Is there a, con- is there a conversation mm-hmm. we could recommend? Um, identifying constraints in the market. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if there's going to be, uh, you know, warehousing constraints yeah. or, or weather-related constraints, you know, being a part of that narrative, mm-hmm. uh, being a part of that decision-making to say, listen, I think there's going to be a problem here. Right. Um, you know, let, let's have a secondary plan in case it, you know, it, it, it really shows itself and, be, and yeah. becomes a larger problem than it already is. So you're really the proxy for um, for a company's transportation department. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So right. if you think about a transportation department, a traditional, you know, food manufacturer, like, you know, what would your title be? You know, if you as as you yeah as, mean, our, as our complete service offering yeah like, I mean, you would look at your logistics manager yeah. being okay, under logistics. a, okay, a US, U.S. cold storage okay, employee. Yeah. So you're really the logistics manager of our our food manufacturers of our customers. Yes, that's great. If a customer has trouble covering a load or you know finding carriers, can you step in and kind of take on those services, or are or are you looking for a longer term relationship with with the customer? Yeah, I think in line with U.S. Cold, we're looking for longer term relationships. Okay. Yep. Um, and that's not to say that we can't step in and help today. Okay, that's great. Uh, I think that's great. Yeah, we'll 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 certainly be willing to help wherever we can, you know. But really, when you look at the program, uh, you know, if customers want to go, want us to go out to market with an yeah. RFP, uh, wants to onboard new carriers, yeah. you know, we want, uh, you know, we would like a longer term agreement uh. Uh, to kind of give the market the signal that hey, U.S. Cold is is representing. Yes. Uh, you know, this enterprise yes. on RFP okay. and operations and, and things like that. I mean, I think it really speaks to um, kind of what U.S. Cold is known for. And that's, you know, hey, we'll step in and we'll grow with you. We'll walk alongside you. Yep. You know, we want to be, you know, we're a family, you know, very family focused organization. Um, and I think that that's kind of the same thing. It's like you're part of their family. You're part of their team. You're their logistics manager. So in essence, you can help them in any, any way that you possibly can. Yes. Right. Yes. So, you know, if we think about that, is there an underlying cost savings that could be realized with this? Yeah, I look at it, you know, two different ways. One, um, the RFP is, mm-hmm. is always a powerful tool. Yes. You know, what, what was our cost last year? Cost per pound, cost per case, extrapolate that out through the RFP. Okay. Yeah. Um, you could kind of take a look at that. And then, you know, frankly, there is there is the labor aspect. You know, if we're making life on accounting a lot more easy yeah. by, because we're not opening up envelopes and filing documents in, in, in right. uh, uh, filing cabinets, uh, you know, there's going to be efficiencies there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so there's a couple different ways that you can look at cost savings. Right. Uh, you know, and it's it's on both on the, on the, the delivery aspect mm-hmm. and, and really the, the the personnel aspect. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you think about it, um, a little bit of this seems like it's like a fourth party logistics provider, a 4PL, but we've, we've taken the approach of not calling it that. So what kind of, what, what prompted that decision or why did we, you know, be more intentional about calling it complete and not like a 4PL? Because I think we have a product, yep. you know, uh, and I don't think it's a label, and I don't think it's yeah. a, you know, a, yeah. a, a, you know, a Wikipedia definition. You mm-hmm. know, I know it's out there, and you can Google it and things like that. But, 
you know, I really do feel that we have a product out mm -hmm. there to yeah. offer to folks. And, yeah. and, you know, when we're referencing complete, mm -hmm. you know, we're starting to get folks to understand, hey, you know, Tom's talking about TMS. Tom's talking about helping yeah. an AP process. Mm -hmm. Tom's talking about running an RFP. Mm -hmm. You know, that's starting to come along, and it, it's just a better representation, I think, of what U.S. Cold is, right. is, is trying to offer. Exactly. So talk to me a little bit about the technology, um, because I think that's a huge um, benefit to, to what we have here. Um, and I think if you're thinking about, if you're starting out in food manufacturing, if you just acquired another product line, you know, oftentimes you don't have, you know, millions of dollars to spend and, or time implementing a warehouse management system, implementing a, you know, a technology system. So talk to me a little bit about um, what technology we bring to the table as part of this. Yeah, and that's, and that's well put. You know, when you're in production, you know, production is driving the day. And, yep. you know, that's what I saw shipper side. You know, so we're bringing a good product into mm -hmm. the complete uh, right. portfolio with, with Mercury Gate. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an industry TMS mm -hmm. and it's industry grade. Uh, you know, talk about connectivity with carriers, mm -hmm. customer portals, uh, things like that. So, and this is what we use today, not just in complete, but also in our to manage uh, our, our transportation. Yeah, services. this is what we yeah, use. Yeah, so our consolidation right? services are this way. So you've customized Mercury Gate, right? Correct. Correct. And we've tested it. We know what we're doing. Yep. We understand how it's used. Yep. You know, yep. And you know. and the nice thing about Mercury Gate is that it allows for those add-on pieces. You know, mm -hmm. that trackability through products like Forkites, which yes. is which is, a, which is a passive trackers. Yes. You know, where's my load? You know, that internal right. yeah. question. Where's yes. my load? Where's, where's my load? Uh, yes. Where's my product? You know, where's my product? Um, you know, EDI. You know, mm -hmm. um, it, it it allows for EDI trade. You know, on messaging and you know through that, there's a lot of efficient uh, mm -hmm. you know information they could get across to carriers and cu and customers. Yeah. So you both. can, I mean, you don't have to wait six months to get started. You can literally just give you guys the information, give get the load information, and you're up and running. Correct. Yeah, yep. and I think that's great. Right. So you know, when we talk about this cold complete and you know how we're going to offer these services, like how long does implementation? Take. You know, depending on the size of the customer, okay. right? Yep. Uh, larger programs are going to take a little bit longer because, mm -hmm. you know, we have to understand the rules of the business. Right. You know, yep. mm -hmm. we're, we're not going to impose our rules. Yes. We need to kind of come to some type of middle ground on, hey, what are, what are, are what's the workflow look like? Yep. Does everyone agree with the reports and the visibilities? You know, but we can help with that too, right? I mean, oh, yeah. you know, you, you walk in and say, I have product, I store it, I need to ship it, and you can say... Let's talk about the process. Right. Let's talk you about the you process. You don't know the process yet, but we're going to get and, to it. And understand the rules. Yep. Um, so, so smaller customers, you know, you know, 30 to 45 days. Let's yep. understand the rules. Let's get some rates and let's, you know, run yep. an RFP if needed. Yep. Uh, larger, you know, you could, could it's more, it's a, it's a, it may be a little bit more intricate process. Mm -hmm. So you're going to, you know, it's a 60, 90 day range. Yeah. But uh, the technology's there. We already have it set up. We've already invested in it. Right. So really it's about understanding the business rules and, Which is exactly what we do. And where are we going? Yep, that's exactly what we do. And that's, I mean, that's kind of how this started in the first place. We listened to people. We understood them, um, you know, and we said, here, we've got something that we can offer you guys. Correct. And we want to make sure that we've we've put it together so that people can understand that it's not just, hey, we're going to manage your transportation. It's, hey, we're going to... We're going to walk alongside you and actually give you something that, um, that you know, is going to make you better and more competitive. Correct. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, when you think about 4PL, you think about, like, risks and dependencies on them. You know, how do we handle the risk and dependency kind of perspective that people might get when they're, when they're, um, when they're, when yeah. someone's managing their transportation. Yeah, it, it could make people nervous, right? Yeah. You say, yeah. okay, this is a big spend. We're, giving we're, a lot. Gonna, yep. we're putting trust in another yes. entity to, to, to handle that. You know, it, I, I think one, it goes back to the rules that are established. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, what do we need yeah. to hear? And then I, I think it's always about communication. Yes. You know, and the cadence of that communication. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, it's weekly for most of the year. And then mm -hmm. if it's, you know, we're in summer season and it's a seasonal product. We need to be talking daily about deployment strategy. Mm -hmm. and we need to be talking daily. Uh, same with reporting. What reports do we need? Mm -hmm. Let's understand that in the front end. Yep. Not in the, you know, not at the end. Right. You know, when things are, there's a problem. What are we going by? On time or, mm -hmm. or cost per pound? Right. What, let's understand that on the front end mm -hmm. so that, you know, uh, you know, we get that cadence and that communication. And then there's just problems. You know, we're responsible for kind of resolving that. You know, if we run an RFP and bring in a carrier that's a non-performer, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to carry your scorecard them. Mm -hmm. We're going to give them opportunity to improve. But but we're going to have, you know, we're going to be responsible for saying, hey, is this a viable carrier for us going forward or do we need to find a replacement, right? So 
it's all about reporting and, and being accountable to, to, to what the business is doing. And, and that's what systems help, yeah. help, help yeah. do. I mean, I think, you know, and I think, you know, we've spent a lot of time and effort making sure that our systems are set up correctly so that we can manage our business. Right. And so now it's just a natural exp extension for you to manage theirs. Um, and I like the thought of, you know, kind of there being this one throat to choke. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's a little bit of the advantage is, hey, you don't have to call, you know, 20 different carriers when something is when something happens, when an issue happens. Right. You have you call U.S. Coal. Correct. You just call one person Correct. and that's the same person. Correct. Um, and I think, you know, can you talk to me a little bit about your staff and the experience that they have and what they offer? Sure. Everyone that it comes on to that staff on mm -hmm. the, under the complete program is very customer service oriented. OK. You know, yes. and, and the the straight uh communication to them is they are the customer, our customer's transportation department, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, there's other entities out there. It's, it's load driven mm -hmm. and it's quantity. We're our trans, we're our customer's transportation department. Right. So whatever they need, uh, you know, that's, that's what we're here for. So, you know, we're very customer service oriented, uh, in the background and supporting of that group. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, you know, our carrier, mm -hmm. um, their carrier group that is acquiring carriers and onboarding carriers. Right. So if we have gaps, you know, in the system, you know, they'll, they're looking at trucks every day, right. you know, and who fits where, um, you know, so we have, we have those support pieces, right. you know, in the background and which is, which is exciting. You know, it's, it's, it's great. It's great to have that structure. Um, you know, but that's, what's in place really the kind of the customer service and, you know, for people that reach out to us saying, Hey, we're interested in this program. You'd be assigned a customer service rep. Yep. You would know who your person is. You would know who their supervisor is. You, you know, I would be available. You know, but in the background, know that there's folks supporting what they do. Yep. And I mean, I think it really boils down to it. All starts with a conversation. You know, if you have a question about, you know, you know your your capabilities in transportation. If you have a question about rates or RFPs or how are you going to cover this load. All you need to do is reach out. I mean, that's what we want to help you with, right? right? So this is the next question. So how do we, how do we, how do they get in contact with you? Yeah, I, well, I think the easy, <laughs> I think the easy answer here is sales at uscoal dot com. Oh, perfect. That, that would be okay, easy. Right. That's, certainly, that's the easy button. That's the easy that's button. That's the lane. Yeah. You know, but if if you feel like you want to reach out to me, I'm T Harivnak. So it's T H R I V N A K at uscold.com. Okay. I know it's a lot. So sales at uscold is uh, is easy enough, and and that that will find its way to me. Okay, great. Well, you know what? I've really enjoyed this conversation. I've learned a lot, um, and I hope you guys have. You know, you did too. So I want to thank um, Tom Perivnek. He's our senior manager in business development, and he was here talking about our complete service offering. So, you know, in terms of learning a lot, we learned that not only do we offer warehousing and transportation consolidation, but we also manage and offer complete, which is really, you know, a technology and experience solution that we can help you solve any of those problems um, that you might be faced with and challenges in terms of transportation. So um, until next time, uh, stay cool. And I'm Dr. Anna Johnson. Mm -hmm.